Hello and welcome to another video. Now, in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at the world's longest waves. While length of ride isn't the only determining factor of a wave's quality, getting a wave that's hundreds of meters long or even kilometers long is a pretty like epic thing if you ask me. These are all pretty well-known waves because frankly, if I knew of another wave that was as long or longer than any of these waves, I definitely wouldn't be telling you guys on YouTube. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the longest waves on the planet. So starting in El Salvador, in the town of La Libertad, we've got Punta Roca. So Punta Roca has come to the attention of the surfing world since it appeared on the CT. Super, super sick wave. While it's definitely not one of the longest points on our list, it's still very, very fun. Breaks for a couple hundred meters over a cobblestone point break. It's got sections for turns, sections for tubes on the right day. It's just like a really fun, kind of forgiving, high performance wave. That said, it's really crowded, but if you can connect from the top all the way through to the inside, that's a ride of 200 meters plus. Even further, if you can make it to like this weird inside section, there's also loads of other waves in that area as well. So yeah, cool place to check out. Next up, we've got Pavones in Costa Rica. Now this is a wave that I'm actually yet to surf, so I haven't sampled the place for myself, but hopefully gonna go there this year. But yeah, again, not crazy in terms of length. It breaks for around six to 700 meters on the right swells can have sections for tubes it's tropical it's forgiving it's easy to surf and yeah it's been on my hit list for a very long time um so yeah if you've surfed it please let me know what it was like and what how gnarly the crowd is and how long it actually is Next up, we've got Uluwatu in Bali. Now, Uluwatu is generally kind of split into different waves. On smaller days, it's kind of almost separate waves. You've got temples at the top, the peak in the middle, racetrack down the end. But on bigger swells, they kind of like connect. I mean, you don't necessarily ride waves all the way from like temples through to racetrack, but you can definitely like paddle out of the peak, catch away from there and ride it all the way through to the end of racetrack, which is, you know, hundreds of meters long. It's like 400 meter plus rides. Um, I mean, if you're doing that, you do pretty well to kind of navigate all the different sections, it kind of twists and turns and sucks and warps down the reef. It, it's quite a, a tricky one to ride for that long, like compared to some of the other waves on this list. Uh, next up, we've got Madawi Point, which, you know, I guess used to be kind of like a lesser known wave, but nowadays stupidly crowded on most days you'll find like 40 to 50 people out at the point on any given day but that said it's a really really long ride hundreds of meters kind of like a reverse version of punta roca but probably twice as long breaks over cobbles in the same way kind of has that same like kind of fat like playful type vibe to it and so yeah it's a really really fun wave quite fat but you know if you're kind of an intermediate or if you're just cruising it's a really cool wave to check out so I just want to interrupt this video to let you know about a really cool brand I've started working with called Ho Stevie. Now Ho Stevie makes some really cool surf products at basically a fraction of the price of what you pay for some of the other top surf brands. I've tried out a few of their products recently and it's been really cool. It's been really cool to work with a brand who, you know, is looking to make good but affordable surf stuff to help people like me and you just go surfing. I've been trying out their five mil wetsuit here at home. I've had some really fun waves here at home. So five mil has been keeping me nice and toasty and I'm about to go traveling for the rest of the year and put all of the other stuff through its paces. So keep an eye out for that. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can check it out. But for now, let's crack on with the video. Next up, we've got Noosa in Australia. Now this is another one that comes with the crowds, but on the right day, you can ride waves for almost a kilometer here, which is insane. Now there's lots of different points in Noosa, but in terms of length, you've got like boiling pot to main beach, that kind of stretch, which not on normal days, they're all kind of separate parts of the point that don't connect. But on those big like cyclone swells, they all join up and you've got this stupidly long right and you, it's possible to get one from the pot at the top all the way to main beach so one time i managed to like get one from the crowd like got one from the edge of pot all the way through like nationals uh, all the way down towards main beach and the wave just kept going and going and going and i was like no way i'm gonna make it all the way to main beach i was like i've never done that before and just as i was getting from like the little cove section to main beach i just didn't quite make it it went all weird and my legs just kind of gave out and i just kind of collapse and but I was so close to making it so I'd like to claim that I've done that one and ridden it all the way through but really I haven't. Next up we've got J-Bay in South Africa so I talk about J-Bay a hell of a lot 
on my channel and that's for good reason because although J-Bay is kind of like Ulu's in the way that it's a really long point but all the parts of it don't necessarily join up but on the biggest and best swells they kind of do connect and you've got this flawless really really long point break you've got like the super tube section that joins to like coins a point i can't remember all the names but they kind of all link up especially on these bigger swells and yeah you've just got this like big long open canvas and yeah on the right day you can basically ride away for over a kilometer so heading back to australia next up we've got the super bank so the super bank is obviously regarded as one of the longest waves in the world it's also one of the most crowded if you've surfed out there you know how hard it is to get a wave and how frustrating some of the sessions can be out there because there's no way really that compares to that level of crowd but if you can get one you can get stupidly long rides here you can take off from like behind the rock at snapper or like kind of just next to it and if you pick the right one and like the sand's good and everything lines up you can ride it from there all the way through the little marley section through rainbow bay on through green mount and then almost like down until Kira. It never really connects with Kira, but it's definitely possible to get one to the end of Greenmount, which is, you know, a really, really long way. And this only happens when like a good swell meets like good sand, because sometimes the banks change and it's not always possible to do that. But yeah, like I said, if you meet a cyclone swell with good sand and you can kind of just get a few of them and just keep doing runarounds all day. And kind of the only way to get waves out there is just by surfing all day, because it's so crowded, but if you put 10 hours in, you'll probably get like three or four waves. <laughs> Heading to Peru now, and next we've got Chicama. You know, it's got the famous name of the world's longest left. And having surfed it, I can definitely back that. Like it's a really, really long wave. It's where I've ridden the longest waves of my life. On a good swell, it's possible to stay on a wave there for like two minutes plus. I've rode waves there sometimes and just didn't really surf them properly, but just kind of like timed how long I was on the wave for. And sometimes, yeah, it was almost two minutes. And in one case, I got over two minutes, which is insane. Like, even if you're not ripping into it and like getting barreled and stuff, just being on a wave for that long, is just so cool. It's like such a novelty. But that said, the wave is good as well. Like there's, it kind of changes depending on which parts of the bank it's moving over. So some sections are a lot faster, some sections slow, some sections kind of double up. So again, like a lot of these waves, you kind of walk up the point or if you're lazy and you've got money, you can get the boat to take you up to the top. When I was there, I just did these like huge runaround laps. Now there's lots of different sections to Chikama, but it's really, it's all about the first section called L Point. Although it doesn't join up with the other ones, L Point is still like two kilometers long on a really good day. And you can take off from the top there and ride waves all the way into town, which is just, yeah, mind bogglingly long. <laughs> Obviously like it's famous, so it is crowded, but you can kind of get waves with not many people sometimes, just like early in the morning, like before the boats go out, you can get a few to yourself. Next up, we've got Raglan in New Zealand. Now Raglan most of the time is broken up into three different point breaks. They don't generally connect, but at the top you've got Indicators, then Whale Bay, then Manu Bay, they're all their own versions of left-hand points, each with their own individual characteristics and like intricacies. So. I'll let you go and kind of figure them out for yourself. But on really, really big swells, they all connect and it's actually possible to ride a wave from like the outside of indicators all the way through to Manu Bay. I mean, not many waves do this and you'll need a big board and you need to be out there in like the elements, you know, and like massive swells. I've never done it myself, but I've spoken to a handful of people who have managed to do it. And that distance is like over two kilometers long. You know, to be on a wave for that long is insane. The only issue would be you'd have to walk all the way back up to the top if you parked at Indicators. <laughs> Next, we've got Skeleton Bay in Namibia. Now, I guess this kind of took the title of the world's longest left from Chikama, or at least the world's best left, just because of the nature of how it breaks. It's just like a seemingly endless freight train left barrel. I'm sure it's a hell of a lot harder to surf than what it looks in clips. Any kind of first-hand reports that I've heard about the place have been like, oh, it's, there's a lot more current moving, it, the drops are a lot harder to make than it looks. So yeah, I imagine it comes with a lot of challenges as well. You know, we've all seen the clips. If you can get one, it's like wave of your life territory. There's nowhere on earth where you can get a barrel for that long, that's that square and just keeps going. Or obviously like multiple barrels on the same wave. Namibia's kind of ground zero for that kind of thing. So yeah, that concludes our list for today. They are some of the longest 
waves on Earth. As well, please let me know what your experience was like of surfing any of these waves, because I've surfed most of the waves on this list, and although they're pretty long, they always come with like their own challenges, and you know, or it's always a bit different to how you dream it to be. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please like and subscribe if you did. For now, it's goodbye from me, and I'll see you in the next episode.